Today I'm going to be playing a bit of slide and that's not something I do that often on here simply because I'm not really a slide player and I dabble in slide, I can fake my way through one or two bluesy things but I'm certainly no Dwayne Ullman or Ry Kuda and I suppose I like to think of myself more as a George Harrison kind of slide guitar player. And when I play slide it's generally as more of an atmospheric or textural thing. It's about coming up with interesting parts that support a song rather than being about chops and flashy licks. And I just find slide to be a really effective sound that works in all kinds of musical situations. It's certainly not just a bluesy thing. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. How to come up with simple effective slide parts in standard tuning and I'm going to begin by playing a little piece of music which I've put together. It's actually just a chord progression and I'm going to do some slide guitar stuff over the top of that and then I'm going to discuss my approach. <laughs> That's the kind of slide playing that I like, the kind of thing that I find myself doing in 90% of slide situations. And it's not about the flashy stuff, it's just about simple, interesting parts. And in my experience, whether it's recording or playing in bands, this is the kind of thing that people want from you, whether it's a producer or a songwriter, they just want cool parts that are going to support their song and help them sound great. And you certainly don't need to be a slide specialist or even to have much slide experience to be able to do this kind of thing. And what I want to do in this video, I'm going to divide it up into three parts. In the first section, I'm going to talk about slide technique and good practice. And then in the second section, I want to give you some strategies for coming up with these kind of parts. And then in the final section, I want to talk about slide gear and effects and tone and all of that kind of thing. So let's get started. Let me start by talking a little bit about basic slide technique. And as I say, I'm not a slide specialist, but these are just the kind of things that have worked for me. And first consideration, I suppose, if you've never played slide before, is what kind of slide is best. And today I'm using this glass bottleneck style slide. That seems to work pretty well for me. But I've also got other slides. I've got this quite heavy chrome slide here and I've got a brass slide somewhere. I couldn't find that today. And all of them feel a bit different, sound a bit different, but I can kind of make it work with most of those. And I find that if you've not got a guitar that's specifically set up for slide, then something a bit lighter is better, and then you're less likely to be fretting the notes with the slide and having the, the, the notes kind of fret out. And as far as the length of the slide goes, if you want to play big six string, five or six string chords with the slide, then obviously you want a slide that's going to cover 
all of the strings of a guitar but a shorter one can be a bit easier to control sometimes and that can be good for single note stuff but uh, as I say today this glass slide works for me. I mean, another consideration is the uh, diameter of the slide and I actually got quite skinny fingers. This slide is a little bit on the big side for me and it kind of rattles around a little bit on my, my little finger but if I crook my finger inside the slide then I can uh, make that size of slide work for me. Which brings me on to the next point which is which finger should you use to wear the slide on and there are lots of different opinions and schools of thought on this and there are great slide players who use different fingers. For me my advice for beginner slide players, players who've never played slide before, is to try it on your little finger or pinky. I think that's certainly got its advantages and it means that you've got your other fingers free if you want to play chords and go between playing slide and chordal stuff that's very easy to do and it also means that you've got your other fingers available to mute behind the slide which is an important thing with slide playing. So I just mentioned muting and I think muting and intonation are the two most important factors when it comes to slide playing. So let's start with intonation that basically just means playing in tune and as soon as you're playing slide you can't really rely on the frets you've actually got to position your slide in such a way that things sound in tune and you obviously want to make things sound as in tune as possible. Um, I'm not one of these people who has to have things absolutely perfectly in tune. I think some of the charm of slide playing, if you listen to some of the blues guys, is the, the out of tuneness of it or the kind of variable nature of pitch. But I think you know, particularly with this style of playing you do want to try and make sure things are more or less in tune. And if you're doing that with a slide, remember you want your slide to be right over the fret. If you're fretting a note with your finger then it's going to be in between the two metal frets. If you're fretting with the slide it needs to be right over the fret. So um, you can look at that visually although sometimes that can be a bit deceptive if you're looking at a fret from an angle you can it's quite hard to see whether you're right over the fret or not. So you do need to use your ear as well to tell you whether or not you're in tune. Uh, you can of course give it some vibrato which is a good way of disguising if something's a little bit out of tune. And a good exercise might be just to play through some scales just up and down, something familiar and then you can really listen for whether something's in tune or not. So if I just play an A minor pentatonic scale and then for me the other really important consideration with slide playing is muting. And if you're not careful, you're playing on an electric guitar with a loud amp or overdrive, then quite quickly things can get out of control and you can get string noise and messiness. And again, that's not necessarily a bad thing with certain type of slide playing with a certain type of slide player. That rawness and messiness is really fantastic. And it's something you really want to go for. But perhaps with this type of slide playing, it's a bit more controlled and it's a bit more precise. So you do want to be able to keep some of that string noise under control. And really two methods that you can use to do this. One of them is to mute the strings behind the slide, which you'll find will resonate on their own unless you control them. So if you're taking my advice and you're wearing your slide on your little finger, then you've got these three fingers available to mute behind the slide. So when I'm playing any note with the slide, I'm usually touching the strings behind. Here I'm touching with my first finger, maybe with my second and third fingers as well and that just keeps things nice and quiet behind the slide. And then you've got to think about this end of the guitar as well and I'm always using my picking hand to mute notes too. So I might be just touching the bass strings with the palm or this part of my thumb and today I'm playing finger style and quite often I'm playing a note with my index finger and then I've got my thumb and my middle finger on the surrounding strings just to keep them quiet. So if I'm playing the third string here then I've got my thumb on the fourth string, I've actually got my middle finger on the second string, my ring finger on the top string and then I've got my palm on the lower strings. So it's really just the third string that's allowed to ring. And gives you a nice clean slide sound. Let me talk about how I approach writing these kind of slide parts then and just to give this some kind of context I'm going to talk about this over the chord progression that you just heard me play over at the start of this video. Uh, it's quite a simple chord progression, you've really just got a, I'm thinking of it as a verse and a chorus of a kind of song. I haven't written the song yet but it could potentially be 
a song, I think. And the verse progression is very simple. We've just got C. Going to F. And then we've got E minor. Back to F again. So that's really our kind of verse. And then for the chorus, what I'm thinking of is the chorus, it goes to A minor, C, and again, we've got F. Now the first approach you might try is just playing simple sustained notes that fit the chord changes. And often when playing in this kind of style, simple is gonna be better. So why don't we just try playing root notes for each of those chords as they go by, just sliding into the root notes and keeping them sustaining over the chord changes. So over the C chord, we're just gonna play a C note. So we could just play the fifth fret on the third string. And then F, just going up to the 10th fret. And then E, we've got one fret lower at the ninth fret and then back up to F again. So super simple, but this could be a part that could really work in context and not get in the way of vocals or anything else that's going on in the song. If you wanted to develop that approach a little bit further, we could try hitting some other chord tones. So any of the notes in the chord are fair game. So we could try the third. That's often a nice descriptive note and it tells you whether the chord is major or minor. So that's often a good bet. So we could do the same thing, maybe playing the thirds on the second string. So the third of the C chord would be E. And then A is the third of F and then Got a minor third over the E minor, so we've got a G, and then back up to A again. And in context with the backing, that sounds like this. try a mixture of different chord tones so one potential part might go like this so you can start off on the C playing the E note that's the third going up to the root of the F chord and then up to the G that's the minor third of the E minor chord and then drop down to the root of the C chord so we've got third root, third, and then root. One thing I like to do to bring a bit more colour to this approach is to lead into those strong chord tones from above or from below. I think the best way to do this is to choose the note that's above or below diatonically in the scale that the song is built from. So this song is in the key of C major, so you can think about your C major scale. And if you're going for that C note, for instance, then you might lead into that from one note below in the C major scale. So that would be a B, so you can go. So you've got your scale tone and then you hit the chord tone. Or you could go in the other direction and lead in from above. So going from a D to a C. And you could do that with the other tones as well. So if you're going for the E as the third of the C chord, we could lead into that from above. Or from below. I was doing all of those things in my little piece at the start of this video. So let me just play around and do a little bit of that leading in from below and from above.
find that you can get away with just playing one note and having it sustain over all of the chord changes. This is another really effective approach and the function of that note is going to be changing as the chord changes go by. So you might just hunt around until you find a note that you like the sound of over all of the chords in this progression. So uh, that note might be an E note and an E would give you it's the third of the C chord, it's the major seventh of the F chord and it's the root of the E minor chord. So that might be a good bet for a note that you can sustain through the entire chord progression. So that would sound like this. thicken things up a bit by using double stops, triple stops or even full chords and you're a little bit limited in standard tuning if you want to use full chords that's one of the reasons why slide players like to use open tunings but double stops and triple stops will work well and one thing that I like to do is to use double stops on the second and third string so this kind of sound here and these can work over both major and minor chords if you think about it so if we play uh, a D and an E that could be the root and the third of the C major chord, uh, but it could be the minor third and the fifth of an A minor chord. So depending on uh, the chord you're playing over and the notes you select, they can give you a major or a minor feeling. So I might, over this chord progression, play something like a C and an E over the C chord and then an F and an A, that's the root and the third over the F chord and then for the E minor chord go up to the 12th fret to get the minor third and the fifth so that could be a nice little double stop part Idea that you might like to try is building some kind of melody or hooky part that becomes a part of the song and you can repeat and I tried to do that in my piece at the start of this video and over the chorus part over this A minor C to F sound I just came up with this really simple part but it kind of stuck in my head it sort of struck me as a nice melody that uh, would stand repeating a little bit so it was just A, B, C and E very simple just climbing up really root notes but uh, you know I like the way it ascended and then dropped down to that E note there so that's something that's a little bit more subjective you've got to mess around until you hit upon something that you like the sound of that's something that sounds memorable and that can be a kind of hooky part of the song but uh, play around and you probably stumble upon something <laughs> talk slide gear then and to be honest not being a slide specialist I don't use gear that's any different from the gear that I would use while I'm playing regular non-slide guitar and I don't have a guitar for instance that's set aside specifically for slide that is set up differently for slide so today I'm just using my Trent 
model why it's not set up for slide but it still sounds great to me and I can still make that work and this guitar has got a kind of medium low action so perhaps the action is a little bit low for slide and I was finding that just occasionally I was getting a little bit of that sort of fretting out noise when I was playing using a slide and you do need to have quite a light touch if you're playing slide guitar on a guitar that's got a fairly low action and it doesn't particularly bother me I don't mind a little bit of noise when I'm playing slide I know there are things that you can do you can obviously raise the action physically on the guitar I think you can get special gadgets which will fit over the nut to raise the nut and uh, give you a bit of a higher action for slide guitar if you don't want to permanently alter the setup of your guitar but that's not something I've ever experimented with now amp wise today I'm going into the Fender Princeton and I've got that running quite clean and I've just got a selection here of effects that I think are useful when you're playing slide guitar so let me just go through those and the first pedal that I'm plugged into here is a volume pedal and I wasn't actually using that in my little piece but it's something that does work really well with slide guitar particularly if you want to get some of those faux steel guitar sounds and you can just swell into particular notes I think that's a really effective thing to do with slide then next in the chain I've got a compressor and again this is a useful slide effect and the compressor can give you extra sustain which is useful with slide guitar and you can also control the attack of notes you can either emphasize the attack of notes the pick attack of notes or you can de-emphasize it so for this kind of atmospheric stuff I might set the attack to be fairly quick on the compressor and that just minimizes the transient the pick attack on the guitar and gives you a bit of a smoother sound and next I'm plugged into my overdrive pedal the J Rocket Archer just for a bit of extra warmth and sustain and then the two effects that slide guitar really loves I think are reverb and delay just to give that sense of space particularly if you're going for that atmospheric sound so I've got both of those things happening today and for delay I'm using the Belle Epoque Deluxe from Catlin Bread and I think I've got a medium delay time quite a few repeats and then I've got double reverb today I've got the spring reverb coming from the amp and I'm also going to add a bit of extra reverb inside the computer just to give you a kind of stereo sound and I'm probably going to use a plate reverb for that let's just go through these sounds I'm just going to turn each of these pedals on in turn so you can hear what they're doing so starting with just the basic clean sound this is just the Trent model one into the Princeton so nice and clean it's basically a kind of pedal platform type sound <laughs> And then if I just turn on the compressor. So you can hear that that adds quite a lot of sustain. And this particular compressor that I'm using here, the Kali 76 from Origin Effect, it's a, a recreation of the, the classic uh, 1176 outboard compressor that you see in a lot of studios and that not only does that compress it seems to do something else to the sound and just add a bit of body and warmth to it as well and that's exactly what this pedal does so if I switch on the overdrive as well and so we have a bit of delay as well and maybe just have a little bit of a play around with the volume pedal as well so That's it for this video hope you enjoyed it and I hope that if you do want to get into slide playing then this video has given you one or two interesting and useful ideas I will be putting my backing track up on my patreon page so if you fancy playing along to that and coming up with some slide ideas of your own check that out thanks a lot for watching take care and I'll see you next time